Greetings from Act Now. This video is about attention control. Somebody just recently asked me, how do I stop thinking about a certain thing? There's a certain thing that's coming into my mind, and I don't want it there. What can I do? What can I do? Now, I'm just going to create a visual example that we'll kind of follow through, use in following through with this short video. All right? Let's say it wasn't this, but let's say it's a pan. Actually, it had to do with some upcoming event this person asked about, and they don't want to keep thinking about it because it's annoying. It's not a pleasant event, and it's not pleasant to think about it. But let's say it was a pen, all right? How do I stop thinking about this? It just keeps coming into my mind, this pen. What can I do? And I answer, well, there are two ways to answer this. One is to give you some tips, tell you the, tell you the way to do it right now, for you to apply with regard to this pen right now. But that's not going to help you much. In fact, I'll tell you how to do it, and you'll try it, and it won't work very well. And you'll think that whatever I, the Act Now guy, has to say about attention control is just bullshit, because it doesn't help much. But the fact is, the real answer is you need to practice long term. You need to engage, engage you need to apply attention control techniques in a regimented sequential, systematic, methodical, regimented attention training program in your life. That's the answer. And how to go about that is pretty much, the, I mean, the answer to that is pretty much the same as what I would give you as the answer right now, just applied to uh, how do I stop thinking about this pen right now. But for these things to actually work, they must be practiced. Now, most people don't think that they have much of a problem with attention training. If you talk, start talking about control over attention, they just zoom right out. They won't pay attention because they don't think they need to. <clears throat> you try to get them to actually pay attention to what you're saying and their mind will drift off, which to me is an indication that they don't have much control over their attention. So, what do you do? You focus on something else. You don't want to focus on the pen. If you even realize that the thought of this pen continually coming into your mind has something to do with attention control, if you even realize that, then the thing to do, well, whether or not you realize it, but the thing to do, if you'll pay attention, enough to listen to what I'm saying, <laughs> if you can do that, the thing to do is to focus on something else, all right? But many people won't even realize that if this pen is bothering them mentally, that that has something to do with attention control. It has everything to do with it. That is attention control difficulty. Because this pen is mentally getting their attention. And what else is attention but a mental thing, unless we're talking about someone's visual attention, which is ultimately underneath it all mental anyway. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> the thought of this pen nagging a person is an attention difficulty. It's an attention control deficiency. Because the pen the thought of the pen is dictating where the person's attention is going, rather than the person's own will. So what do you do? How do you do this? The person say, all right, you have my attention, finally. I right, finally, boom, you have my attention over this kind of thing. So, okay, how do you do that? Uh, let me focus for a second, if I can here, on what you're saying. How do you do that? Well, you focus your mind on something else. And so they try. Mm, that didn't work too well. No kidding, because you haven't practiced. All right, so look. Let's say, let me get some more visuals out here. More visuals. All right. Imagine this pen staying right out here. There it is. There it is. But I have to put it down because I need two more hands. I only have two. I need three. So imagine that pen staying right there. Okay? Well, it didn't stay, but imagine that when I let go, it stayed there. Okay? Imagine it. <laughs> mentally attend to your mental image of that pen staying right there. Okay, but here it goes. 
but it's still there. Okay, got it? All right. Two more pens now. All right. This pen is <laughs> your attention. Okay? It's pointed there, over there where that pen is. Remember? It's still there? Okay. Your focus is pointed there, and it's on a track. Your mind is on a track. I mean, you know, the sequence of mental images and, and concepts. It's on this track. It's toward that pen. Right? Toward that. That's where it's focused. Okay? But you want it. You're going to try to do what I said and focus on something else. Something over here. All right? Well, yeah, that's a different pen. Here's the original one. See that? Okay. Here's a different one. Different kind. Okay? This is where you want your focus to go. It's something else, right? Focus your mind on something else. Or here's the something else. All right? Well, you try to turn your attention to that. You go, oh, I'm going to look there. Focus there. But your motion is still toward that other thing. Because it's on a track. It's moving there. Maybe this pen has been attracting your attention, coming into your field of focus. Your focus for three days now, and it's really starting to bug you to the point where you came to me and you said, how do I get rid of this? How do I focus on something else? So the answer is focus on something else. Uh, the answer is practically built into the question. How do I focus on something else? Well, you focus on something else. Okay, so here's the something else. But your, mind, your attention is already in a groove. It's, on a, it's, it's moving in that direction. It's already there, man. Other things have been going on for the last two or three days, and you've been able to, you know, not focus very well on them because this other thing is attracting your attention. It's attracting your attention. In other words, it's moving in that direction. Okay? There's an attraction. All right. So you put your focus over here. You follow my advice and you go, attention over there. But your motion is still that way. Alright, you're not really moving in that direction yet, you're just like, you look there, and it comes right back to, in the direction that it's moving. So you have to keep doing it. You hear me? Focus here. You have to keep redoing it. Focus over there, focus over there, focus over there. It's a lot of repetition. Maybe several times a second. It's not just one time. If you were actually able to focus on something else to the point of this actually going away from your focus, then that means that you have been able to successfully keep refocusing over there until the movement is in that direction and continues to stay in that direction, pointed in that direction and actually keeps moving in that direction more and more until you give it something else that you want it to focus on. Okay, now here. All right, you get that? Let me think of another, just one more thing to say here about this, or just, well, maybe one of several. At least this one. You know how, like, a zipper has many teeth that lock together as you pull down the, the little handle? All these teeth come together, so you get this zipping sound. Zip, zip, zip right? But each one of those Zs in the zip sound is a pair of teeth coming together, locking together. All right, so there's this repetition. Lock together, lock together, lock together, lock together, lock together, all the way down the zipper. That's how you have to control your attention on something because the minute you don't, it's going to go off to something else. It's a constant repetition of enforcement of will. in tiny little frames of attention control. Little instances of attention control in a sequence. The minute you don't have that control, your mind's attention will go somewhere else. It will go to whatever is dominant choice is. It could be something that's going to happen, something that you need to do, something that you're going to do, something that you already did, something that you did a a thousand years ago, who the hell knows? It's going to be something else other than what you are doing right now. And if you want to know, well, what's the best thing to focus on? If, it's, if I'm going to put my attention on something other than 
this thing out here that is really nagging me and I don't want to focus on. I don't want this in my head. What's the best thing to focus on? You're telling me to focus on something else, like something here, okay? What is the best thing? What is this? What is its content? The best answer always is what you're doing right now. What you are actually doing right now. <clears throat> Maybe it's listening to what I'm saying right now. Maybe it's eating a bowl of soup. Maybe that's what's in front of you to do. And that's the easiest thing, <clears throat> really, to focus on if you're going to take willful control over your attention. That's the easiest thing to do. It's always what you're doing right now, what you're actually involved in. Because it's there. You can see it if you can see. You can touch it if you can touch. You can smell it if it has a smell and you actually have an olfactory sense. You can hear it if it makes sounds and you aren't deaf. <clears throat> It's immediately available to your five senses, at least those five. You can also make it available to your mental senses. You can see it in your mind. You can hear it in your mind. You can smell it in your mind. You can add those senses in, the five mental equivalents to the five physical senses. You can add, so there are ten senses right there that you can use for focusing on what you're doing. It's immediately available. What you are doing right now, whenever now is, is always immediately available as your object of attention. So that's a really good answer to the question, well, what should I focus my mind on instead? Well, how about what you're doing? That's the best thing to focus on anytime. That's really the only way to be actually present in your life. Because being present in your life is defined as being mentally aware and attending to what's happening now. Because your life is always just now, you know. Now, if you have something you need to think about that has to do with tomorrow, and that thing actually is that, uh, you know, object of attention that's bugging you for the last three days, but it's not something that is going to happen until tomorrow, but you need to make some decisions. You're going to have to arrive at some decisions about that. Well, you can set a time to think about those, but it should not be while you're eating soup or listening to what I'm saying here. Give it its own due attention. You can set a time for it. You can say, well, okay, at 9 o'clock this evening, I am going to sit down and focus on answering my questions that I need to have answered for myself or make a decision about what I'm going to do when this thing that's bugging me actually comes up tomorrow at 2 o'clock, this appointment that I have or whatever that's been bugging me for three days. I'm going to have to have, maybe somebody I'm going to meet, I, I, need to, I need to know what, I need to figure out what I'm going to ask that person. Right? Something like that. Okay? So, you can either decide, okay, at 9 o'clock tonight, that's when I'm going to sit down and give five minutes of attention to figuring out what those questions are that I'm going to ask that person tomorrow. Right? So, that's something that needs attention maybe now. So, give it that attention. Don't give it that attention while you're doing something else. Make thinking of what those questions are that you're going to ask that person tomorrow, your object of present attention. Whenever you decide that you are going to give those, making those decisions, your object of attention. Then make that your object of attention. Make that now, whenever that now is. You can do it perhaps now. Maybe that's what you're going to do now. And in other words, focus on what you're doing now. And you can make making your decision about this thing tomorrow your current object of attention. So don't also be eating your soup or listening to what I'm saying while you're doing that. Focus on what you're doing now. Even if that now object of attention is what you're going to do when something happens in the future. In other words, a decision about what you're going to do in some future circumstance. That can be what you're doing now, and when you're done with that, 
then, well, if you've been practicing this sort of thing, you can focus your attention on what you're doing next as you're doing it now. You know what I'm saying here? It's always, when you have this under control, focusing on what you're doing now. It could even be remembering something that you did in the past. Remembering it now. In other words, if you need to recall something, and we all need to recall things, maybe there's something to be learned from whatever we did in the past, and we need to think about it again in order to make a decision now about something. Well then, focus now on what that event was in the past because it's required now for you to do so. So then that is now your object of attention. But to have it just popping up at the times you don't want it to, some past event, well, hmm, then you need to focus back on what you're doing now. And the only way to get good at this is to practice. Now, whenever somebody comes up to me and asks, what can I do to get this out of my mind? You know, uh, this keeps popping into my mind. What, what do I do? What do I do? I already know right away that that person does not even understand that this, it probably, most likely does not understand that this is an attention control question. And they don't know the answer. Therefore, they probably don't have very good control over their attention. Regardless of how good they think their control over their attention is. Therefore, they might not even pay close attention to my answer. Therefore, I repeat my answer many different ways. I just did that now. I gave you the answer to this question within the first 30 seconds of this video, first one minute of this video. But I have said it in a lot of different ways. And it took 17 minutes and 20 seconds just now to do so. Because you probably, if you don't have complete control over your attention, paid attention to every word I said, most likely in five second bursts, with other things that came into your mind, if you paid perfect attention to every word I just said in this last 17 minutes and 40, 50 seconds, perfect attention to it, with trained attention that you have practiced, you should be able to practically repeat everything I said word for word. Practice. Alright. Maximize your performance. Evolve your life. Act now.